Hey, Tommy from The Run Testers with our monthly essentials guide. In this video, we simply talk about kit that we've tested over the past few weeks that we just think is really good. It's quite often kit that we don't cover in a lot of the guide videos. So it's things like socks that we don't get around to very often, but we really want to tell you about some good ones that we've found. So let's jump in and see what we've all picked this month. So my first pick for the monthly roundup is the Shox Open Run Mini. Now these will be very familiar to anyone who's used the standard Open Run headphones or indeed the Open Run Pro which are very similar as well. But they just have a smaller band so they fit kind of closer to the back of the head which I really like. I think the fit's much better. I was quite interested to try them out because I don't really like the way the Shox headphones normally jut out behind my back. And these are basically half an inch shorter, the band. So it sits a bit snugger to the head. You can wear them with a headband, which is important to me at times. Um, and they're otherwise exactly the same as the Open Run uh, normal headphones. They cost the same, 130 pounds or dollars. They have the same eight hour battery, IP67 rating. Pretty much they've been the only headphones I've used for the last few weeks because I've not had anything else to test. And if I do wear headphones at the Berlin Marathon uh, at the end of this month, I will probably wear these but I might not wear anything at all but I think it's a nice addition to the shock range because they can jut out a fair bit and they're, they used to say they're designed for you know people with very small heads or kids and stuff like that but actually if you just like a snugger fit to the headphones these are better and they're the same price and the same in every other way so worth looking at next this month I'll be testing out the Saw Marathon Speed Shorts now Saw released uh, their marathon shorts last year they were split shorts and they basically had two pockets on the back and then loops on the front for carrying gel so it was a system where you could carry about six quite big gel gels with you on the run very comfortable in your pockets I don't tend to use split shorts I much prefer half tights and this has the same system except the pocket at the back is now just one big pocket instead of two little divided ones which is better because that actually means on kind of day-to-day -day runs you can pop your phone in there and it still carries gels just as well and then you've got the loops at the front for two more gels now these loops work quite well. I would say if you have a hilly marathon, you're pounding down hills in particular, gels can bounce loose. But in general, if you're just controlled cruising along on a, on a straight flat road, then they work really well uh, for holding gels in as well. Now, I don't tend to use these in marathons myself because I use soft flasks and I take drinks with me in the marathons. But for all other kind of races, the sore speed short is basically my favorite because it's unbelievably comfortable. I've never had a hint of chafing. I have used it in marathons before. They're really comfortable, really lightweight. Just they feel so nice for shorts um, that I love wearing them for long distances and if I'm using a belt in a marathon I will wear these shorts with the belt just so happens when I'm doing a marathon this month I'm going to use uh, the decathlon shorts with built-in kind of pockets so yeah they're really watching they're obviously astonishingly expensive um, as often the case with saw they're 125 pounds 144 dollars not going to go and say they're worth it. Like I say, I'm using a pair of 24 pound de decathlon shorts in my marathon, but if you're looking for a very comfortable pair of shorts, you use gels in marathons, these are a great option. They won't, certainly won't disappoint, but you know, they are obviously very expensive. My last bit this month is also marathon related and it's uh, it's very much marathon season right now. And my topic is souvenir kit. Now I love souvenir kit. I really like having something to remember the race that I can then use for general wear or for training wear. Like I don't, race t-shirts are often just not very nice. Um, so actually if you can go and pick the kit you want as a souvenir, that's the great way to do it. New Balance always does a really quite nice mar London Marathon range. I've got a couple of pieces here. There's the, the vest there and um, some half tights there. I've got some good drop-in pockets, so they're very usable stuff. And, that, and this is New Balance's impact range, which is really good running gear at a pretty good price. And the Marathon gear is also very good value. So the white t-shirt and vest design, I think is really nice. Some people have said it looks like a tube of toothpaste. I don't agree with that. I think it looks more like kind of 80s England football kits which is great uh, and that's a really nice option if you buy that because you, you don't really know you roll, always roll in the dice a bit with the race t-shirt you can go and just pick up a really nice t-shirt jacket shorts from the range I have a really nice memento I still use some old New Balance uh, shorts from an old London Marathon and they make me smile and then if you want to upgrade your souvenir experience then it's fair to say yeah Tracksmith is the place to go this is the Berlin hat I'm wearing the Berlin jumper right now um, and obviously they do a range of vests this is for the full marathon series and that's the Berlin vest that like, this is really really nice kit um, so it comes at a much higher price than the New Balance stuff but this the actual vests they have in their full marathon range obviously they've got Chicago London New York and Berlin as well are very lightweight racing vests so you know they're a really good option for actually racing the marathon if you don't wear a club kit like I do but they're also just nice souvenirs to have and run with later the hat is made in partnership with Sealer so 
Obviously gonna be a very good solid cap. I'm gonna wear this in Berlin, I think is the plan. And then yeah, I actually think the ultimate even is maybe not even to get race kit, but to get just a nice casual jumper with Berlin written on it that, you know, people, if they know, they know. And um, it's also just a really nice jumper to wear. So souvenir kit, I think, I'm in full marathon excitement mode right now. All I think about is marathons. I love looking at all this stuff and having you know, practical mementos, I think is better than a medal and a race t-shirt, which could be rubbish. <laughs> So my first pick this month is the BAM Novia crew neck base layer. Now, there's not a lot to say about this really. It's just a very simple, comfortable, nice base layer. It's made from sustainable materials. BAM's a brand that's very focused on sustainability. Uh, but the good thing about BAM is that a lot of the products aren't as expensive as you would expect from a brand that is so focused on sustainability. Sometimes sustainable brands tend to be quite expensive. This has got an RIP of around £59, but I think it's actually about £41 at the moment. I'll pop the actual price up on screen. Um, the nice things about this is that it's quite nice and comfortable and loose fitting. It doesn't feel too tight or anything like that. Um, it has thumb holes in the cuffs, which I really like. I always tend to have tops with thumb holes, like having warm hands when it gets cold. Um, and the other thing as well is that it just looks really sleek and nice. I don't tend to have a lot of clothes apart from running kit. So I quite like my running kit to double as nice clothes as well. So this is a sort of top that I've just been wearing to the pub and stuff as well recently just because it's a nice subtle black top. There are some other colors that you can get as well. Uh, they're all quite subtle, but some have um, highlighted detailing on them. So if you want something that looks a little bit more sporty than just this full black number, then there are some options out there as well. But yeah, it's just a good solid base layer. Great for the winter months as it gets colder. My next pick this month, and it's a timely one because this is the New Balance Impact Run 5-inch shorts. Uh, and these are the London edition, so there's a bit of London detailing on there. Um, it's quite subtle. There's not a big London design on them. Um, but what I like about these is that there's a lot of storage in them. So on the back, there's a sort of horizontal panel that sticks across that you can put gels in um, with a zip on it uh, or your credit cards or your keys or things like that and um, it, because it's horizontal it doesn't bob about that much there's not a lot of movement up and down it's anything sort of moves side to side but it's it sort of locks it down quite nicely it's very comfortable it also has an additional sort of slip that goes over the top of that I've not really worked out what that, that's for yet but I assume that I could probably put some um, some clothing through it or just something that um, can be easily held within this uh, sort of loop section. Uh, other things that's got in it as well is on both sides are these elasticated uh, panel pockets that you can put gels in. Um, one is slightly more secure than the other one uh, and this one's got a key, key ring loop on it as well so if you want to put your keys in there and not worry about them falling out it does a good job. Other than that they are quite lightweight. They don't have a, 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 a long inner layer. They've got um, a panty layer inside, but they don't have shorts underneath them. And I do tend to like that quite a lot, uh, especially if I'm racing. So I probably wouldn't use these for racing because I'd have to wear a pair of compression shorts underneath to stop chafing. But for normal runs, I found them very comfortable. They dry very quickly when you get sweaty. And yeah, they're just a good solid pair of shorts that are a little bit cheaper than some of the um, more premium options that you can get out there, but deliver the goods, especially when it comes to um, storage on the run. My third pick this month is socks. We often have socks in the essentials guide uh, and I'm not a man who really likes exciting colored socks. So this this pair of Hocker socks, they come in a pack of three. They are called Hocker Crew Run socks. So they're a crew fit, which is my favorite fit. I don't like them all the way up the leg. I don't like ankle length ones. So these fit me perfectly. They come in a pack of three um, for 35 pounds, which means that they're not too expensive considering they're a really nice, lightweight, comfortable pair of socks. Um, they're not too thin, which I find can be a problem with some shoes that I wear. They're just the right level of padding on them so that they fill the shoe up nicely. They feel very comfortable, but they're not overly hot, um, but they are very comfortable. So yeah, I've been using these for quite a lot of my runs at the moment, all three pairs. Uh, I just think it's a good offer for socks in a time where socks are getting very expensive. So well worth picking up these if you just want some good value, good level of quality socks um, that look all right. So for the first of my picks of essential kit this month, I've got this, this is the OMM 20. This is a 20 litre backpack that you can use for racing 
and I tend to basically use it just for general kind of commuting. It's got one kind of major sort of large 20 litre compartment in here, which you can fit pretty much everything, laptop, clothes, you know, shoes, change of clothes, jeans, all that kind of stuff, which makes it ideal for commuting. You've also got a large top pocket, which comes with a key hook for keeping things safe and secure in there. So you've got two kind of, two compartments. It's not loads and loads of sort of compartmentalization, but just enough. On the side, you've got a couple of, you've got a big kind of stretch mesh pocket, which is really good for stashing a jacket in. You've also got one zippered compartment that kind of sits on the on the waist kind of harness. This is a little bit far back, but it's got plenty of room. And again, you know, for gloves, for other bits and pieces, for fuel, I find that great. I really like the fact that you've got a really, really nice, big, wide kind of shoulder strap and the overall kind of back into the harness is padded, really comfortable. It doesn't juggle and jiggle around. You've got high adjustable kind of sternum straps and that kind of waist strap that comes right around the front really helps to keep it in place no matter what you've got in there. And it's just a really solid, robust, kind of strong bag. You know, the, the, the shoulder straps, everything feels like it's gonna be, you know, around for a long time. I've been using this now for probably, I don't know, it must be about six months and there's barely a touch, you know, it's, it's all kind of really, really solid, nothing, not even a scratch on it. Really, really nice kind of chassis and harness, super comfortable, just the right amount of capacity for running those kind of daily errands. And if you wanna go and do a multi-stage race, or go on a bit of a kind of maybe like a fast packing running got a weekend this will do the trick as well and that one you can get from the omm site for 75 pounds although i have seen it cheaper elsewhere second up for me and this is a bit of a specific kind of niche one now i think probably many of you out there probably reach for soft class to go into ultra vests and bits and pieces if you're if you're running with a multi-day pack that's a bit more substantial and it will take I've got a pocket that's big enough to take a hard flask. Here's one that I really recommend. I sometimes like doing that because basically when you're filling a hard flask at a race aid station, you can pop it on the table whoop, and it will stand up and you can fill it. If you've got to rip powders out and put it in, then you can stand rather than a soft flask, which you have to have one hand to fill it and pour on water. All that. It's easier to put something down on the table. This, the benefit to these kind of raid light, they're called the raid light Argo. I think it's supposed to be like Ergo, but the reason is they've got this kind of curved situation going on here, which when it's in your pack, sort of hugs the chest a little bit more nicely. It fits a bit better sort of close against the body. doesn't kind of rub and, uh, and, and chafe or anything. You can get these in 800 mils as well, which I really like. Gives you that extra bit of volume in terms of the water you can take. So if you're going on a big long run, two of these will give you over a litre and a half capacity, which is great. I tend to use them, one with water, one with my electrolytes, or one with my kind of maybe my carbohydrate fuel and the other one. You can also buy them with different sort of um, tops. So this one, obviously you've got your extended kind of bite valve, which this is like Marathon de Saab kind of style that people use. So it's in there, you can twist it around and you drink from it without having to take the bottle out. You can also get them with the kind of smaller bite valves, which I quite like. I would just sort of take them out and drink from them, pop them back in the pockets. Um, sometimes I think these kind of things stick in your face a little bit, depending on where your pockets sit on your pack. But these guys will cost you, depending on what size you go for, there's a 600 mil, there's an 800 mil, different, obviously different sort of tops will cost you somewhere between kind of 10 and 17, 18 pounds, but highly recommend them. They are the Argo, the Raid Light Argo bottles. So for my final pick this month, I've got these. These are the Precision Fuel and Hydration 90 gram carb gel pouches. I used this on the New Forest Marathon recently. I put two of these in my belt and ran with that. I also took them on my run along the Danube and used them. Essentially what you're getting here is the equivalent of three of the Precision Fuel and Hydration gels in a single resealable pouch. Now, the reason I really like this, and I found it brilliant actually on the marathon, it's the first time I've used it on a marathon in this way, is that basically you can just open it and you can take little sips of as much of the gel as you want. And it gives you a bit more flexibility about when and how you're fueling. These tops are really easy to open and close. There's none of that kind of, you're not ripping and fighting a gel opening multiple times you know you've basically got three gels in here that's three things that you don't have to open on the move which i quite like you don't end up with triple the type there's numbers of sort of sticky wrappers in your pockets and i just really like that i could take out and sort of sip little bits of this or take a big swig of it i say a swig it's a gel so it's like a it's a bit like a morton sort of viscous kind of um sort of sort of situation but you can, you can basically take down as much of this as you want. Also, if you get to the end of the race and you haven't used it all, seal it up and it's good to go the next time. It's still there for, for use in, in future. That's also good for when you're training. So I think there's brilliant kind of versatility with these. It also means there's only a couple of things in your running belt to take 
which also I, I really like. No kind of trying to find slots for nine different sort of gels to stash around there. So this is something that I would really sort of highly recommend. They come in at around about kind of five pounds each, which is pretty good when you consider there's three gels in there. That is the Precision Fuel and Hydration 90 gram carb gel pouch. <laughs> So my first monthly pick is this. This is the Seiski Polka Combat Vest. Now I do use a lot of Seiski's kit. I actually race in their combat shorts and before the guys at Saw made us our run testers ones, these are the vests that I would typically race in as well. Now these are, this vest has kind of got me through a lot of my summer kind of running um, over the last couple of months. I still wear it out when it's the conditions are not so great, but also, you know, I just like running and training in a vest. I think the key things for me is I've got this in a small and I find with a lot of running vests that kind of can feel quite clingy in terms of how they fit. This was absolutely fine for me. It doesn't feel too tight. It isn't too baggy as well. So I think if you're gonna go for it, I think you could go kind of your usual size and you should generally get a good fit. The other thing for me as well, so when I start to sweat or the vest gets wet, it doesn't feel too clingy for me. You're not kind of ripping it kind of, you know, off you when you've kind of finished a run. So yeah, definitely, you know, big faith for me. One that I continue to use um, even when it's not kind of hot and I, you know, I want to kind of run and train in a vest. Um, yeah, massive fan of this. That is the Seiski Polka Combat Vest. So my second pick is this. This is the Hocker Glide three quarter sleeve top. Now you can pick it up in orange or what Hocker calls this coastal shade, which I definitely prefer. Um, now I generally, when I'm out running, I would generally be in a t-shirt or a vest. I don't have a lot of three quarter sleeves. So it's kind of one of the first ones I've had where I've actually really enjoyed using it. And the reason I've enjoyed using it, first and foremost, it's really nice and light. Um, I don't like to wear a lot of kind of bulk when I'm out running. And you know, I definitely don't feel that with this. I think also it's quite a nice top to have if I'm if I do want to wear a vest and I kind of want to throw something on top to just give me that extra bit of warmth before I go to a kind of track session this is what I would do this is kind of what I would use um, and yeah I've generally I found it really useful to use if I if I want a little bit of protection a little bit more warmth but I don't want that extra kind of bulk this is kind of what I throw it on again I think you know pre-race pre-track session you want something to wear before you know you, you're getting warm and you, you then you want to you know kind of throw it into the corner when you are ready to kind of race or ready to kind of pick up you know your interval session then I think this has been a really good top it's one that I've really enjoyed um, using over the past month as well. So my last pick is a watch strap. Now I am a big fan of nylon watch straps. I think particularly when I first used the Garmin Enduro, the problem is that Garmin's official nylon straps are very expensive. So what I've done is I've hunted out one that costs a fraction of the price. And I think ultimately gives you something similar in terms of look and in terms of the quality and hopefully the durability over time as well. So this is from a brand called Topsic. They are on Amazon. That's where I found them. It's, it costs 15, 99, 15 pounds. So, you know, significantly cheaper than Garmin's official bands. They work in a similar fashion. This should work on watches like the Phoenix 6, um, the 7, uh, obviously the Epics that I'm using on as well. It's all very pretty straightforward in terms of how you secure them on the uh, case as well. You kind of loop it around the lugs and then you've got kind of multiple kind of Velcro fasteners here, which I think is really important because I think on the Garmin Enduro and some other nylon straps, you know, once that kind of Velcro kind of goes on one place and it also, you know, it also makes it difficult to kind of use it long term and it doesn't hold in place. So far, it's been so good from that point of view. It's been comfortable. I do like this color. There's a good range of colors that the brand offers as well. So if you're looking for a cheap nylon band you, that you know is gonna give you something similar to what Garmin offers, but a lot less, and I think also it will work with other watch brands as well. Just have a look at the supported um, brands and watchmakers on the, on the listing on Amazon as well. Then yeah, this one has worked really nicely for me. I've been looking for a more colourful nylon band to use and this one has kind of served me well over the last month and yeah, no signs of issues with it so far. Okay, monthly essentials. I finally got some running kit worth shouting about. Um, first up, these are, you can see they're London Marathon branded. I imagine New Balance make them without the London Marathon branded, but they're the I think these are the impact shorts. I think they're about 40 pounds. I've tried to find this exact pair on the website, um, but I couldn't find them, but they have similar pairs. And they're just oh. super comfy. I wasn't expecting, I think when I first got them out the box, or the bag, 
the packaging. I was a bit like, oh, there's no um, draw cord. And I always hate a running short that you can't pull really tight against your tummy when you're running. So I was kind of thinking these are going to be a pair I wear like on the bike or do you know I mean just walking the dog? But they're actually, they actually do stay put. I find that they've kind of, they've got like a, they're definitely designed, I guess, for race day. They've got like, that's see-through there, isn't it? Like a um, panelling, um, the pockets and mesh. I found that this one with the little pull tie, my phone was a bit bouncy in there, but this one was better. Um, there's another pocket on this leg, but they've also got this kind of super handy um, pocket. It's not a pocket. This thing at the back that you can chuck a layer through. I think at the moment we're in that like, in between season and you go out in a long sleeve and then take it off after a couple of miles and you always end up tying it around your waist and then it loosens you can kind of stuff it in here and it did I just wore like a do you mean like a long sleeve and it it stayed put in there and I just really like them I think they're really comfy I normally run I do most of my running in the lululemon fast and freeze um but these are half these are half the price pretty much and they are I did find them really comfy. New Balance do sales all the time. You can probably pick them up. I mean, if you don't care about the London Marathon branding, I'm not doing London and I'm going to wear them. Um, you could probably pick them up in the sale in a couple of weeks. And yeah, I thought they were a good pick. I got this in a couple of months ago. It's not really been the right weather, um, but it kind of is now. Now it's getting a bit cooler in the mornings. Is this really simple Under Armour kind of long sleeve layer it's called the Tech Twist Half Zip, and I'll come on to why. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good, it's it's really lightweight, it's breathable, and it's got a, a kind of pocket on the back. I guess I don't really, I know, I never really know what you put in these pockets because they bounce around loads, don't they? But maybe a key, maybe a gel, I guess. Um, and it's quite a relaxed fit. This is a small. I'm like a size eight normally, and it's quite. You know, it's not tight fitting. You can wear layers underneath it. But the thing I, I'm i really impressed by, and I don't know if I'm just really late to the game, but I've not seen this on a lot of, n not a lot of winter clothes that I wear, is this kind of tech. I guess it's a little pocket. So you've got your fun pocket there and it's a little pocket so you can see your phone, your phone, see your watch through it, which I just think is so smart. I don't, again, I don't know let me know in the comments if this has been around for years and I've just not ever bought anything that has it on. Um, but I just think it's smart. I think it means you can still run with your kind of, you know, with the sleeve pulled over your wrist and your thumb through when it's cold and you don't want to wear gloves, but you can still see your watch. I just think it's clever. And it's, again, this one's £36. I think it's on sale at the moment in this colour because it's kind of a lime green. I enjoy that, but there's loads of colours, loads of colours available. Um, I think this one's 20 quid at the moment. So do you mean it's just like a good, a decent layer, not too expensive. And I can imagine, I mean, it's got one half, it's got a zip that comes down quite low. So you can kind of wear things underneath it, wear it on its own with just a sports bra. And I think that will get you through autumn, maybe a bit of winter. Um, but yeah, I really, I liked this. Okay, so that's it from us this month. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon. It makes a big difference. And check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes, as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment. And don't forget, we've also got our monthly podcast that comes out at the end of every month. If you head down into the caption below, you can find the link to the various podcast providers that the podcast is hosted on. So take your pick. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you soon. Thank you.